Hi, everybody. It's Professor Mitchell. Uh, we're continuing our review of some topics that we need for Chapter 5. So we just went over exponent rules, and now we are reviewing polynomials. Okay. So what we're going to be doing in this section is a little bit of vocabulary. I'm going to go through that part kind of fast because that's not super important for what we need in Chapter 5. Uh, adding and subtracting polynomials is a little more important. Multiplying polynomials is very important, so we want to make sure we're up on that. Uh, FOIL we're going to be using, so we'll go over that. Special products is important. And then uh, I thought about this, polynomials in several variables, and I think that's kind of important because what's going to happen in Chapter 5 is our polynomials that now have X's and Y's in them, uh, they're going to have sine x's and cosine x's in them. So those are like uh, several variables. Okay. All right. So uh, again, the vocabulary is not super important for what we're doing. A polynomial is any expression that looks like this. Now, when you see an actual polynomial, it doesn't usually look like this because you have actual numbers filled in for these a0, a1, a2, et cetera, et cetera and you have a specific uh, exponent filled in for n. All right, so usually a polynomial looks uh, a lot friendlier than this, all right? Um, whatever your largest exponent is, that's called the degree of your polynomial. Uh, the number that's attached to that term is called the leading coefficient, and uh, any number that's sitting around without a variable attached to it is called the constant term. We do do a lot with polynomials in pre-calculus as part of the uh, uh, college algebra portion of pre-calculus. So uh, really nothing to do with trig. Okay, so uh, when you take pre-calculus, you'll see this definition again, I think when we get to chapter, I wanna say three. Okay, a polynomial in standard form just means that you write the largest exponent first and put the exponents in descending order. You've probably been trained to, uh, to always write your polynomials like that, even though you don't always have to. Uh, special names for certain polynomials. A polynomial with one term is called a monomial. Two terms is called a binomial. Three terms is called a trinomial. Okay. All right, so now we get into some actual problems. When you add or subtract polynomials, that's just combining like terms. So here's an example. I want to add these two polynomials. So this is really what a polynomial looks like right here. I've got two polynomials right here. No more a sub n, a sub n minus one, n. All right, those things are all filled in with uh, specific things. So this is a really easy problem. You just find all your like terms. For example, turn my pen on here. Uh, negative 17x to the third plus 16x to the third is going to give you negative x to the third, right? Because negative 17 plus 16 is negative 1. All right, I have a couple of x squared terms. 4x squared minus 3x squared is 1x squared, which is just x squared, right? Negative 11x plus 3x is negative 8x. And then negative 5 plus negative 15 is negative 20. Okay. All right, that brings us to multiplying polynomials. We just went over exponent rules, and those are going to come up uh, when you multiply polynomials. If you multiply two monomials, which means they each have one term. Uh, usually you're just using the product rule for exponents. You're adding the exponent. Uh, any, if you have anything bigger than a monomial involved, you have to use the distributive property. Okay. So for example, 5x minus 2 times 3x squared minus 5x plus 4. So this is the product of a binomial and a trinomial. So the way they do that, and there are a bunch of ways to do this, is they have uh, distributed, let me show you what they did. 
They took this uh, trinomial 3x squared minus 5x plus 4 and they distributed it to the 5x, which is how they got this part, and they distributed it to the negative 2, which is how they got this part. Okay. So now you distribute your 5x using the rules that we just went over in uh, P2. 5x times 3x squared is 15x cubed, right? Because uh, x to the 1, so 1 plus 2 is 3. 5x times negative 5x is negative 25x squared. 5x times 4 is 20x. Then you go over here to the negative 2. Remember, you're distributing a negative 2, so that's going to change all your signs. Negative 2 times 3x squared is negative 6x squared. Negative 2 times negative 5x is plus 10x, right? And negative 2 times uh, 4 is negative 8. Now you find your like terms. I see a couple of x squareds. Negative 25x squared minus 6x squared is negative 31x squared. And I see a couple of x's. 20x plus 10x is 30x, right? That brings us to FOIL. I'm sure you all remember seeing FOIL in your algebra class. FOIL is an acronym that stands for first, outside, inside, last, or I usually say first, outer, inner, last. It's for uh, multiplying two binomials. Okay. So here comes an example. 7x minus 5 times 4x minus 3. So let me see how I did this. Eh, okay. So the first terms are the 7x and the 4x. 7x times 4x is 28x squared. Outer is 7x times negative 3, which is negative 21x. Inner is negative 5 times 4x, which is negative 20x. And then last is negative 5 times negative 3, which is positive 15. So you put those four terms together, 28x squared minus 21x minus 20x plus 15. Combine your like terms, and you get 28x squared minus 41x plus 15. Okay, that brings us to some special products. These uh, come up pretty frequently in Chapter 5, especially uh, this one right here. All right, so that one is called the product of the sum and difference of two terms. When I make this into a factoring problem, which is what's going to happen in the next section, it's called a difference of two squares. And we have actually already used this. We use this for certain... Uh, rationalizing the denominator problems. You remember uh, when we had to rationalize the denominator of something like 2 over 1 plus the square root of 3, you multiplied the top and the bottom of that thing by the conjugate. And the reason we use the conjugate is because this thing right here has the form a plus b. The conjugate has the form a minus b. So when you multiply those together, it gets rid of the radical. That was the whole reason we used that. And then you have your uh, perfect square trinomials. All right, this is how you square a binomial. There's definitely a right way and a wrong way to do that. Okay. So let's see what we have for examples. Ah, 7x plus 8 times 7x minus 8. So what I usually say about this is I'm not going to get mad if you FOIL that. I'm just going to think, okay, well, this person could have saved themselves some time if they had recognized that this was a uh, sum and difference of two terms. So this has the form A plus B, A minus B. So when I multiply those together, it's going to turn into A squared minus B squared. So you just square the first term, square the last term, and put a minus sign in between. That's all you have to do. Okay. So uh, playing the role of A is 7x, playing the role of B is 8. So here is your, here is your a squared 
minus b squared. You square the seven x, be sure to include the seven, not just the x. Uh, comes out to 49 x squared minus 64, which is the same answer you will get if you FOIL it. I just think it takes a little longer. All right, that brings us to polynomials in several variables. So what they talk about here is a polynomial in two variables. And again, what's going to happen in chapter five is that x and y are going to get replaced with sine x and cosine x. So that's almost like two different variables. Okay, so uh, it contains one, uh, the sum of one or more monomials that have this form, all right? They have an x and a y in them. Uh, just like before, the constant A is called the coefficient. Uh, the exponents have to be whole numbers. This is a thing that we don't have to think about very much. I usually um, bring this up to a, a beginning algebra class. When you have a polynomial in several variables, the degree of a term is the sum of the exponents. So if you had a term like x squared y cubed, the degree of that term is five. You do two plus three. All right, so let's have a look. I think we have a multiplication example in here. Works pretty much the same way as if there was only one variable. Oh, okay, not a multiplication example. This is a subtraction example. And I'm actually happy to see one of these uh, because you have to be very careful when you subtract polynomials. Remember that you are subtracting the whole entire polynomial. So that's like distributing a negative one. All of these terms over here are going to switch sign, right? Which is why uh, this thing here turned into adding the opposite. See, they changed the sign of all the terms, okay? And now it's just like before. You find all your like terms. Like terms are a little harder to find uh, when you have several variables involved. Like terms with several variables means that every variable has the same exponent, okay? So it's easy to see that x cubed and uh, x cubed are, are minus x cubed are like terms, okay? But so are negative four x squared y and 6x squared y, all right? The same variables with the same exponents. This term right here stands alone. It does not have uh, a like term to go with it, so that's just gonna appear in the answer. So what you end up with at the end is your x cubed minus x cubed cancels. There's no x cubed in the answer. Negative 4x squared y plus 6x squared y is 2x squared y. Here's your 5xy squared that didn't have anything to go with it. <clears throat> and then negative y cubed plus negative y cubed is negative 2y cubed. All right, that brings us to the last example for P4. We are multiplying two, bon uh, two binomials that have two variables. And that works the exact same way as multiplying any other binomials. You just FOIL. Okay, two, or I don't know where I got two. Seven X times three X is 21 X squared. Seven uh, X times negative Y is negative seven X Y. Negative six Y times three X is negative 18 X Y. And then negative six Y times negative Y is plus six Y squared, right? So you line those four terms up, and as is often the case with multiplying two binomials, you get some like terms. Negative seven xy minus 18 xy is negative 25 xy. And I have 